Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most important organs on the MCAT, the kidney. First, we want to understand the physiology of the nephron. The point of it is to make sure we keep important things like water and some salts while getting rid of toxic or excess substances. So where does the nephron get all this fluid and solute to begin with? The blood, of course, specifically the afferent arteriole. The afferent arteriole brings bodily fluid to the nephron at Bowman's capsule. The bundle of arterioles inside Bowman's capsule is called the glomerulus. The glomerulus filters out large proteins and only allows water or other small solutes through, like sodium, potassium. At Bowman's capsule, this blood is filtered into the nephron. That's the key word we use to describe when we move fluid from the blood into the nephron. It says filtration. Now the fluid is called filtrate. The filtrate then moves to the proximal convoluted tubule, or PCT, where some solutes and water is reabsorbed. Reabsorbed means we're going from the kidney to the blood again. So if I extend this other artery out here, this is actually covering all of the kidney, and we call this the efferent arteriole. This covers the whole kidney, and these water salts are all directly going into this efferent arteriole through a process called reabsorption. Called reabsorption because the first absorption happened when you ingested a substance and it went from the digestive system into the bloodstream. So now it's being reabsorbed into the bloodstream. The filtrate will then move from the PC2T to the next part of the kidneys, the loops of Henle. So we need to draw these in. The filtrate will start moving down the descending loop of Henle. At the descending loop of Henle, this is where water is reabsorbed into the surrounding tissues. So how does this water move out here? Well, I'll give you a hint. It doesn't take any ATP. Since it takes no ATP, this means it must be going down its concentration gradient. So as we see, the deeper we get, we see a higher salt concentration. This allows for quote unquote free energy to just let water move through. But as we'll see in a second, this isn't free at all. So let's continue following the path of our filtrate. So it's coming down. We just lost some water. So now the filtrate is saltier as it starts going up the ascending loop of Henle. At the ascending loop of Henle, here's where we come full circle with the salt story. So the ascending loop is only permeable to sodium, but this does take ATP. So here's where the energy is coming in, is it takes ATP to pump out the sodium. And that makes sense because the sodium is going against its concentration gradient. We're making it a saltier environment all because of the ascending loop of Henle. The filtrate will be now much more concentrated as we head up to the distal convoluted tubule. Here at the distal convoluted tubule, we reabsorb more water as well as some salts. But now something new happens. Certain molecules the body wants to excrete in the urine are secreted from the blood into the distal convoluted tubule. So let's say we've got some blood over here. Well, what are these toxins? A way to remember them is the acronym dump the hunk. Things that we're dumping. H plus for H, urea, NH3, and potassium. All of these are going to move into the distal convoluted tubule to soon be excreted. Finally, the filtrate with all of these toxins are going to move into the collecting duct, where a little bit of water is still reabsorbed before finally the fluid is secreted into the bladder. Thank you so much for watching our video on kidney anatomy, and I will see you next time.